Hi, I'm Dylan Ryan. I'm the Chief Physician Assistant at Virtual Our Lady of Lourdes in Camden, New Jersey. For the past several years, I've used hemisphere monitoring in the cardiac surgery setting, especially with foresight tissue oximetry sensors. I found the information from these technologies to be valuable when caring for our patients and hope this video helps you apply this technology to its full potential. In this video, we'll identify distal limb ischemia causes and complications and also review common methods traditionally used for monitoring distal extremity perfusion assessment in comparison to continuous tissue oximetry, also known as STO2 monitoring. We'll conclude with a case example demonstrating the benefits of STO2 monitoring. Distal limb ischemia can be defined as malperfusion in an extremity related to reduced blood flow and or oxygenation. Ischemia can occur in multiple settings, primarily when patients have large arterial and or venous cannulations such as a femorally placed intra-aortic balloon pump, femoral or axillary impella, or most prominently with a femorally placed veno-arterial or VA ECMO cannulation. Factors leading to increased risk of ischemia include improper anticoagulation, cannula size, embolization from cannula insertion, female gender, young age, and peripheral vascular disease. Unfortunately, ischemia occurs anywhere from 10 to 70% of VA ECMO cases. This complication has been proven to increase risk of morbidity and mortality. The most effective way to treat this is early identification. Traditional methods of monitoring leg perfusion while arterial flow is interrupted include the five Ps of circulation assessment, pain, pulse, pallor, paresthesia, and paralysis. Other assessment tools include using ultrasound, Doppler, and ankle brachial index. These common assessment tools are subjective and intermittent, which may delay the detection of ischemia. The Foresight Sensor is a non-invasive near-infrared spectroscopy technology, which allows for the continuous monitoring of tissue oximetry, also known as STO2. With the Foresight system, saturations can be assessed continuously and objectively on either the upper or lower extremities, depending on where a device is inserted. The trends can be analyzed for potential interventions. Foresight sensor can be used to reliably trend tissue oximetry in multiple locations. In addition to monitoring cerebral STO2, the arms and legs are used for monitoring distal limb ischemia. At the bedside, I like to document the initial tissue oximetry value for both lower extremities immediately prior to cannulation, and then monitor STO2 while the device is in place. We continue STO2 monitoring until 24 hours post decannulation. A strong trend showing a reduced STO2 of greater than 15% will trigger us to consider an intervention. Typical interventions can include repositioning the cannula, insertion of a distal perfusion catheter, removal or relocation of the device, or other medical treatments. If our interventions are not effective, we may have to perform a fasciotomy, and if all else fails, an amputation. With continuous monitoring of STO2, I've been able to intervene earlier as compared with traditional monitoring. This may have prevented significant complications. In one instance, we prophylactically placed a distal perfusion catheter immediately following the insertion of VA ECMO for cardiogenic shock. Once the patient was transferred to the ICU, the distal extremity on the side of arterial cannulation decreased by more than 40%. We brought the patient to the cardiac cath lab and the distal perfusion catheter was noted to be incorrectly placed. The catheter was replaced under ultrasound and fluoroscopy guidance with successful implantation. STO2 displayed on the hemisphere monitor from the foresight center demonstrated a rapid return to 65%. This was less than 10% different from the patient's contralateral extremity where no cannulation was present. Now let's look at another case study involving a 79-year-old female presenting to the emergency department with a non-ST elevated MI. The patient was taken to the cardiac cath lab where they found severe left main disease in an ejection fraction of 25%. An intra balloon pump was placed in the left groin. She developed pulseless VTAC prompting defibrillation with a return of spontaneous circulation. Her postcode echo showed an EF now less than 10%. To provide an increased level of support for her decreased heart function, the balloon pump was exchanged for an impella. Per our facilities protocol, the foresight sensor was placed on both calves for distal limb perfusion assessment. 
The patient's baseline values were noted to be 62% on the right lower extremity and 64% on the left. Upon arrival to the ICU, the STO2 on the patient's left lower extremity decreased more than 25%. After a thorough clinical evaluation, we decided to place a femoral arterial line in the right groin. We also inserted a distal perfusion catheter flowing from the arterial line to the affected left femoral artery. Saturations in the left leg returned to the initial value of approximately 63%, confirming the effectiveness of the intervention. This patient went on to have a stent placed to the left main artery, was weaned from all forms of support, and ultimately went home able to walk and return to her normal activities of daily living. Continuous STO2 monitoring with the foresight sensor provides absolute and trending values to evaluate distal limb perfusion. I use it in patients undergoing any femoral artery cannulation, such as a femorally placed intra-aortic balloon pump, femoral or axillary impella, or most prominently with a femorally placed veno-arterial or VA ECMO cannulation. The patient is monitored for the duration of cannulation with post-decannulation monitoring for at least 24 hours. I rely on this technology daily, both in the OR, if a cut down is made for cardiopulmonary bypass, as well as in our cardiothoracic ICU. I hope this provided some insight on distal limb ischemia, how to better monitor it, and perform interventions accurately and effectively. Thank you for listening. To learn more about monitoring with the Foresight system, you might want to check out the determinants of cerebral desaturation video in this series. Tune in to the next Critical Insights episode, where we'll continue our conversation on advanced monitoring. Like this video and subscribe to stay up to date on clinical educational videos, symposium recordings, and more.